stay. Nigerians have continued to battle with the poor supply of electricity nationwide. This despite uh, the generation of energy from hydroelectric dams and gas-powered plants. According to reports, only 45% of Nigeria's population is connected to the energy grid, while approximately 85% experience frequent power supply difficulties with some regions virtually lacking electricity altogether. While this situation has more often than not caused disruptions to business activities affecting the livelihoods of millions of, of households, electricity theft and commercial losses pose significant challenges to Nigeria's power distribution efficiency. That's what we will be discussing now with our guest. He is engineer Adeshegun Oshibanjo, a lead consultant at the MacBeat Transnational, uh, MacBeat Transnational Limited. Yes. Engineer Adeshegun, thank you very much for joining us uh, at, at this time. Thank you, Kemi. Thank you, Olamide, for having me. It's always a wonderful pleasure to be here. Indeed. Okay. And this is, um, you know, such a very necessary conversation. Yes. But on the other hand, you could even say it is something that has been overflogged. Uh, you know, year in, year out, governments of, of the day talk about yes. this at a point or we are supposedly in, you know, the privatization um, uh, scheme of, you know, power all in a bid to have better power supply. But, you know, here we are, many still grappling with um, you know irregular uh, supply of this needed commodity, let's start yes. off with your assessment of the situation. Ah, very well, thank you very much. Um, that's that's exactly where I, I, I would love to uh, commence this conversation. Um, unfortunately, the unserved uh, population and the underserved population are still largely high. You have capped it very well. It's just about. I mean, look at the the uh, uh, massive population that we have. We just have, like you rightly said. I think it's even less than 45% captured mm. uh, uh, by electricity supply. But, okay, let's, let's, let's start this way. Let's just take a quick rundown of uh, how President Tinubu has dealt with the uh, power supply. I mean, uh, yes, ele ele the, with electricity supply in Nigeria so far, he started very well, very, very well. Uh, he quickly assented to uh, the Electricity Act ah, 2003. 23, 23. Okay, he was, he gave, he gave that very quick accent, I mean, and which we showed that uh, he came with the intent to revolutionize electricity supply in Nigeria. Okay, uh, again, uh, President Muhammadu Buhari had actually paved the way for that to happen uh, with the, uh, uh, the um, uh, what's that called again now, uh, you, the, the, the constitutional backing, there was, uh, there was, uh, because EA 2000, and, I mean, uh, 2023 right. needed to have constitutional backing. backing. So mm. President Buhari had taken care of that. I mean, that, that has been signed into law as well. So moving well. Now, the second part of what he did so well, you know, when he came in, he made, he made this, uh, this inaugural earth-shaking speech, fuel subsidy is gone. Like I always say, the Hawks fought him seriously. Because, I mean... This is, you're telling everybody straight out from the one that it's no longer going to be business as usual. A new sheriff is here. That is clear. So they fought back terribly. And um, I will tell you, the greater part of what we're facing today is caused by the hawks. You could call them the cabals. Mm -hmm. They are still the same. Okay, now, because uh, the president empathized with, with that, I mean, the, the implementation of the fuel subsidy removal, he now, I mean, he now uh, uh, directed that in the interim, there shouldn't be, I mean, subsidy payment should continue to go on. Okay. Subsidy payment should continue to go on. And, um, okay, and also, there shouldn't be anything like, like, there shouldn't be anything like, um, power increment, I mean, um, electricity tariff increment mm. until incremental power supply is achieved. Right. But unfortunately, before we say, uh, uh, I mean, before we know it, NARC came with the stratification of electricity, uh, electricity tariffs into bands and with their corresponding tariff increases. So it now became very worrisome that what happened? The, the reprieve we got from the president, what happened? What changed that? 
The question now here is, I mean, what cost, what changed that situation? Has it changed from what it was, what has actually changed? The second question is, what facts were actually presented to the president? I mean, to, 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 seek, to seek his buying into this. Now, it also became see, highly mind-boggling when, when the Minister of Power came on air on his ex-social uh, media uh, profile to now tell us that he is getting uh, solid feedbacks for, I mean, for the tariff increment. And he's like, he didn't give details. So uh, everybody is groaning. You are saying positive feedback. Where? No further details. But, but let, let's be clear on that point before yeah. Lamide comes in. Where okay. you stand regarding this electricity uh, tariff increment? Yeah. Right. Where, where, do where, where do you stand? Where do you stand on, on this? Uh, is that going to be part of the solution uh, that the present administration is, is, is bringing on board? It will not be. Right. It will not be. You're, you're, going, you're going to make me fast forward. I will. <laughs> it will not be. See, what, what led to this? I mean, the, the tariff increment is very clear. Okay? The operators came back with facts that the revenue generated is not is not uh, I mean is all is all commensurate with the power supply, so that means there is serious revenue shortfall. So he now, in his own wisdom, of course, uh, felt okay. Let's look at if we do electricity tariff increase. You know, we'll be able to ramp up revenue. Yes, but that's not the root cause. Okay. The root cause of this problem is, I mean, uh, the, 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 the data released by NERC, which we call uh, the ATC and C losses, which is it is called the aggregated technical commercial and collection losses. Now, this losses alone is about 48 percent. That's almost half. When we say losses, as in loss incurred, incurred in the entire value chain, starting from generation, uh, transmission, distribution, distribution and supply. So now, when you do the analysis of, of, of this ATC and C losses, you find out that payment collection loss alone stands at about uh, almost 30%. Now, look at it. I'm a business and, and, I'm, and I'm accruing a loss of about 30%. How will that business survive? One, it is putting a strain on the operators. They are having a lot of liquidity, liquidity challenges. Uh, it's putting what's it called on the federal government now, uh, 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 this, this, uh, this uh, fiscal burden, which is the subsidy that the president said should continue to be paid before the tariff increment came in. Okay? Now, along the line, too, the government is not also able, I mean, the government is also having to pay gas suppliers. You understand, you understand my point now? So, for me, what I feel should have been done is to really address that high loss. 30% 30, 30 is high, too high for any business to survive. And that's what I felt we should address first. And um, interestingly, uh, Magui Transnational had actually reached out to the presidency and even the power minister, telling them, yes, we can assist here. It's, it's about metering. But now, you know, it's not just about metering. There have been several mass metering projects in time past that have failed. Because the methodology to it, there is a methodology, there is, there is a technique. I mean, uh, there is, there's also technology to it as well. Because we're not just talking about payment collection losses, we're talking about energy theft as well. As it is, right. I can tap into anywhere, I can do some illegal connections, and it's all coming back. So how would you be able to get uh, 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 money, money, money for, uh, for, for, for the services you're rendering to the people? Mm. So these are, these are not just that. Another serious challenge is also... So this. very, very quickly, just okay. uh, before you know, okay, I get to that point, or you okay. could also add it to your, uh, your next uh, answer. Uh, yeah. You know, it's, it's very, you know, unfortunate that uh, Nigeria actually powers some countries. And when we hear uh, this as Nigerians, we, we do not really understand okay. what is going on, how countries like Ghana, other neighboring countries have enough, mm. and that we do not have. Mm -hmm. Is the problem really about, you know, uh, this, you know, uh, the, 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 the electricity generation or is it the distribution complaints? Now, if it is the distribution complaints, because you mentioned the NERC and data, perhaps we should be exploring 
uh, technology like you mentioned. Yes. But what are the prospects of technology in ensuring that, okay, we get the proper data out to be able to monitor some of these things? Okay, let me, let me, let me first address uh, uh, the part of um, uh, exporting neighboring electricity, countries, right. electricity to yeah. neighboring countries. Uh, okay, now you know people have been talking about renewable, renewable energy. 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 Now, the, the, uh, the most reliable en uh, uh, renewable energy source we have in Nigeria is hydropower. Now, where is hydropower coming from? Hydropower comes from River Niger, straight out. Now, you need to know uh, the origin of uh, uh, River Niger. If it starts from southeastern Guinea, I guess, and it flows into, uh, uh, from there to Mali, uh, I guess to Togo, to Niger, okay? Now, before it now comes into Nigeria, and empties into the Gulf of Guinea. That's the Atlantic Ocean and some other regions. So that's the Gulf of Guinea. So now, what I'm saying in essence is that Nigeria is at the tail end of River Niger. Now, if those other countries, we have dammed, we have like about how many dams now? I think we even have one more dam. And, I, and I'm saying to, 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 I mean to the government, going ahead with dams does not make sense. Again, look at it now. There is, there is conflict, uh, the Sahel Confederation and ECOWAS, and the Sahel Conf Confederation is targeting Nigeria because Nigeria is the ECOWAS chair as of now. Mm -hmm. Now, if any of these countries should dam River Niger at any point in time, all our hydro stations will shut down automatically. And that's the real reason we entered into bilateral agreement with those countries that, yes, Nigeria will be supplying you power under the condition that you do not dam River Niger. Because if you dam River Niger, you throw us into darkness. And, um, uh, uh, and so they are fine. They are fine. It's a bilateral agreement. So then it's so binding on them. It is binding on Nigeria, on us. Uh, don't say but that. But not on them. Not on, no. Oh, you sorry, both sides, both sides. Absolutely. Okay. Both sides. Right. It's a two-way thing. When, when we say bilateral, it's a two-way thing. Right. So we all have to respect. They are respecting their own, I mean, their own end of the agreement, which is do not dam River Niger, while we must, I mean, when I say we in Nigeria, must in turn supply them electricity. So that's why we're exporting power. But a lot of people do not know this. We begin to harass government. Why? We don't have power supply. Uh, you're giving you know, the, it's a bilateral treaty. But sincerely, I tell you, we don't need much of hydropower. So, so, Nigeria has um, got gas. Engineer, so when you say it's a bilateral treaty, what, yes. what is Nigeria getting from this? Beyond the fact that you know the the partners or its its partners, these countries will not dam into the country, into Nigeria. They will what not dam we, River Niger now. Right. Okay. Which will adversely affect us. Yes. Is that the only profit that Nigeria is getting from the agreement? It's the it's that that's that, you that's say just it's more it. than enough. Okay. That's that's just the arrangement. Do not dam for them. Those, those that are, 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 I mean, up, up River Niger do not dam, okay? We, Nigeria, will supply you electricity. So that is why it is compelling on us to always supply them electricity. If we do not do that, they could on their own, like, like I told you, the Sahel Confederation, they could decide to dam, to dam it. Though, of course, it's colossally expensive. It's, it's a, it's a tonky them. project. Yes, yeah. it's a tonky project. Mm. So that's, that's why we are there. Okay, the second leg of our question had to do with, um, you know, how data could Inter just, um, yes. you know, What's the potential uh, of technology in terms that's, of, you know, that's part of data That's part of, that's part of what I just explained earlier on. Mm. Now, technology will play a big role mm. with energy theft. The, the, the percentage of energy theft, you, you, like, like I told you, the ATC and C losses, uh, energy theft is also part of it. And that's why you're having as high. You know, I said collection alone, payment collection alone is 30%. And you still have the remaining uh, 18%, okay, which, I mean, uh, what's it called? Uh, um, energy theft forms part of. I even wanted to take you up on that uh, payment collection loss of 30%, which you earlier mentioned. Okay. Uh, because it, it could also seem 
you can clarify that, that it's also um, a lapse on the part of the federal government. Is, is that how you see it, this payment collection loss? Because it's the... See, let me explain. Right. Let me explain Even you know, though you mentioned earlier on that there are some people, as there are some categories of Nigerians who are caught in corners. So could that also be an explanation for this payment uh, collection loss of 30%? See, it goes back to Olamide's question. Mm. Right? Like I said, if we deploy technology, mm. okay, I mean, uh, to, to solve the issue, the challenge of uh, payment collection loss, okay, we would also be addressing that of energy theft with technology. Okay. There is a way we will do this deployment this time, which sincerely I've, I've given those details before, but I will not, uh, I've decided to keep those details to myself <laughs> now. Yes, as a trade secret. Mm. So if we're, if we're granted that opportunity, we will do all this. And I tell you, energy theft, Will stop now. Let me tell you why. Why I mean the real the real issue here, which is the electricity value chain imbalance itself. Now we have an installed capacity of. I'm not too sure now because it's it's changing with uh, with new generation plants uh, coming on stream. Okay, uh, it's still I think it's varying between 16 gigawatts and 20 gigawatts right now. That is installed capacity. Funny enough, we're struggling. We have an installed capacity of between 60 and 20. We're struggling to generate about 5 gigawatts daily to deliver to transmission. At some point in time, transmission, the transmission capacity cannot will what, uh, uh, what generation stations are delivering to transmission. It was maybe about 3.5 or later became 4.5. Now they say it is 8 gigawatts. Of course, I know it will have improved a lot now with this Siemens project. The Siemens project is actually targeted at the transmission arm, which is, I want to believe, is going on very well. I mean, because we're beginning to see some, some changes, oh, right. but not very remarkable because, like I said earlier on, the underserved part, they are still suffering. And there are some that are not even served at all. They are still in that problem. Let, let, me, let me finish that part. Now, even distribution itself does not have it, I mean, does not have enough capacity to take what is coming from transmission. So that is that imbalance. If I'm saying uh, I have an installed capacity of 60, 16 or 20 gig or gigawatts, I, I meant. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Let's let's even assume I, I generate 16 gigawatts. My, I mean, the transmission value chain should be able to take that 16 gigawatts conveniently. Now, distribution as well, because it will go from transmission to distribution. Distribution as well should be able to accommodate that 16 gigawatts generated so that the entire uh, thing, though there will be some losses, but the losses should not be All as right. this remarkable. We're talking about capacity now. Yes. Lacking. Yes. All right. You know, so with all the things you've mentioned, uh, it will seem as though we are not really there yet. We are not able We're to not. really We're still manage far. Uh, the situation. We're still even far, but the administration of, is trying. Even with the level of the you know, privatization you. that we have. We yes. agree that the, uh, the administration If you is talk trying. privatization, but it's messed up, but go on. I understand. Go on. Just go on. <laughs> so what I'm That's trying to say is perhaps problem. we should be exploring international partnerships, having international companies you know, invest in our electricity sector. Where has that not been explored? Now, I'll tell you, so far, the, uh, I mean, this, uh, I mean, Nigeria's electric power sector uh, is not, is not uh, investment attractive. Mm. If you watch today, what do we have? We have a lot of entrepreneurs going into the import of uh, fuel generators. But unfortunately, our eyes are not opened to the electric power sector that with Electricity Act, 2003, I mean 2023, sorry, there are enormous opportunities, enormous potentials in this sector for investment. Now, why this, it is still the problem of these losses. Because look, I, I, come, I come to invest in a business and at the end of the day, I'm unable to collect, I mean to, 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 I mean, to collect, to collect uh, payment for services render, rendered effectively. How would I want to come? A loss of 30% is too enormous for any business to, I mean, to contain. Mm. So the electric power sector, even t as we speak, even with the, with the electricity tariff increase, is still not attractive. It has to be cleaned up. The payment collection issues, because what, what, what we're saying, the payment collection, collection issues is giving the operators 
liquidity challenges. When you need to spend your money, you have to wait for the government to reimburse you on subsidy. So how would I, how would I be comfortable running that kind of business? Right. And um, are we not even seeing, you know, some of these um, distribution companies? Is that also what we are seeing in some of these uh, distribution companies where Amcon has, has come in? Let me, let me tell you, the problem with the discos, we, uh, the, I mean, of course, there is no way I will be able to do the complete review without, I mean, without questions. Now, the issue with the discos is this. Um, when we're talking about electric power, like I said, there are a lot of things we say, uh, this, is not rec I mean, this is not rocket science, but I tell you, the electric power sector is about rocket, it's about rocket science. It's science, it's technology, mm -hmm. it's very technical, and it's not, it's, not, it's not a business to be toyed with that you, that you try to solve uh, uh, um, political, quadratic, and simultaneous equations with. The unfortunate part was the distribution arm of the, of the sector, I mean, the country played, uh, I mean, we decided to settle political equations, you know, by applying the almighty formula to, to arrive at some sharing solutions that, that messed us up. I remember the, 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 the Minister of Power succinctly mentioned that what, I mean, the, the, the people that handled the last privatization did not understand is that the discos, the, the, they are the last leg, I mean, the last value chain, do, do, I mean, let me use the appropriate word, the last value chain of the electric power sector. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, it's been messed up. And once that part is messed up, the entire, I mean, the entire sector has failed. That's what it means. Now, we played politics with this part. Now, the distribution network is completely obsolete and, um, how do I put it, grossly, the, the infrastructure itself is grossly inadequate. Again, it was sold to people without the technical know-how. They really don't know what to do. They turned the discos into cash cow just to make money. They did not know that they need to upgrade I mean, the infrastructures, and also, exp not just upgrading, <clears throat> sorry, and also expand, which is uh, what the present administration has also go gone into. I I'm shocked. The discos have been sold out, and um, uh, the federal government just entered into, I mean, through the Ministry of Power, just entered into uh, some, some contract of about 118 point, uh, maybe point two US million dollars, okay, to refurbish I mean, our distribution infrastructures, which the owners of the discos that bought the discos were actually meant to do. The discos have been sold off, but now it's still the federal government taking, taking up responsibility, oh, taking up, God bless you, taking up that burden, okay, to upgrade and expand the facilities so that we'll enjoy power. But like I say, even after that, with the transmission, um, uh, what's it called, the transmission uh, expansion and wow. upgrade as well, because then to now, you know, if they only, I mean, uh, upgrade and expand transmission and leave distribution, we'll still be having serious issues, okay? So with what the government has done now, that will also help a great deal, but <laughs> there's still a long way to go, a long way. The unserved, I mean, the underserved and the unserved will still not be captured, so we still have a long way to go. All right, uh, so let's look at solutions. I mean, you've outlined the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I, I, okay. I was getting to that. I mean, we, ha we are Actually here. Actually, mentioned some solutions. Well, yes, we'll you get, did. We'll get back to them. But, you know, um, at this point in Nigeria, when you hear the national grid has collapsed, mm. people are not bothered anymore. I mean, yes. it's collapsed, it faints every minute. Yes, that, that's, that's because of the choice we made. And you there mentioned you mentioned a weak infrastructure. Probably that is part of you know the reasons why this is happening. So I want you to to respond to some of the solutions that we should put in place, some of the policy changes that uh, we should have at this time. Then another issue is um, you know we are in a time where we are facing a climate crisis, yeah. and most times, especially in Nigerian homes. Um, when it rains, the light goes off. How do we make our light or our energy infrastructure very strong to be able to you know, weather some of these events? Okay. Um, let, me, let me start. Let me start. Okay. 
the, 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 the major thing is ongoing already, which is, um, uh, what do you call it? Which is the upgrade. Mm. I mean, uh, the upgrade and expansion that I mentioned earlier on, yeah. which is ongoing. I mean, the Siemens uh, project, uh, which, is a bi which has become a bilateral agreement between Nigeria and, and Germany now, is ongoing for transmission. Of course, upgrade and expansion. But I tell you one thing. The, uh, the, the transmission network is a centralized grid, and it means all generating stations in Nigeria currently are connected to that grid, okay? Mm. Now, that means <clears throat> it, it's a very technical setup, very, very technical setup. Absolutely. And uh, unfortunately, we hear, like you mentioned, the issue of grid collapse happening uh, becoming a recurring, a recurring decimal. I, I, I tend to ask this question. Do we really have that, that technical capacity, that know-how, and the human capital to really, really handle this? It's very complex. And that's why, I'm, for me, if you ask me, fine, the Siemens project is fine. Try and, I mean, upgrade and expand. Then let's look at other options of decentralization, we have put forward a lot of proposals. There are a lot of strategies that Magri Transnational has developed. But like I said, if we ever get the opportunity to sit with the government on the round table to talk, we'll begin to reveal most of them. A lot of them we have revealed in time past, but right. mm. we're not, we're, like, like I said, we would rather keep them to our chest. And like I told you again, technology is a key part. We're not really taking very good advantage of technology, I mean, in solving some of these problems. All right, and, and you know, in, you know, further, uh, dissecting the issue of um, you know solutions, I know you, yes you've alluded to, to some of them, uh, but let's sp spend the next one minute that that we have left in this interview to talk about um, one of the innovations of the Electricity Act of 2023 that you started off with. Uh, you know the powers that states now have uh, to distribute, um, transmit, yeah. uh, 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 generate power. Is, 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 are, are we on track? We're not on track with that. We're not on track. Uh, so far, I still see activity coming from the center, the federal government. A lot of the states are yet, because what the, the provision of the Electricity Act 2023 is for, the states to also, I mean, enact their own electricity laws. I, I can't remember anything. This is still the problem been. of funding. Is this, no, 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 is, is it's that, not funding. Is, is it's it's still... legislation. It's, it's, just, it's just for, I mean, the state government, I mean, the executive to now send the bill to the state house of assembly. That's it. That's it. So not a matter of my capacity as a state no, no, could vary you know, from this, your own yeah, yeah, you know, yes, capacity. You, you have, for you, see, the, 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 the rules are very clear, okay? Set up your own rules, then NERC will now create your own electricity market for you mm -hmm. and cede the control to your state, uh, uh, to the state-created authority to take over from, from NERC. Unfortunately, I, I don't, I can't remember any state so far that has also enacted their own electricity act as well. So that's, that's, another, that's another kettle of fish altogether. It's, it's still the activity of electricity, I mean, of, of electric power sector is still much central. And that would have been the way to go for it to be broken down because the construction has paid the way. If you can afford it, you yeah. can also float an electricity supply company now right. with the electricity I don't act. have to be a state or federal government. No, no, you don't have to. Private, private entities. Once you have the capacity, empowered. the competence, All right. go right ahead. All right, so much to talk about. Yes, indeed, it, it's not only a very expensive, um, you know, uh, venture, but it's also a very wide, uh, all-encompassing uh, all uh, sector, all, all sorts sector, very, very, wide, very wide. Profitable. Uh, we let's hope we we'll come into it to to absolutely. Invest and stop stop. I mean, stop importing generators. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I hope. I hope I'm speaking for Lamide, but I'm looking forward to seeing you again uh, to, to to further well, yes, dissect <laughs> to further dissect uh, the, this subject. We've run out of time. Uh, I'm always. Yeah, Adesha lead consultant at Magbit at Transnational Limited. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'm, for always, I'm always available. For Thank you. With us. All Thank right. you.